Hello everyone, this is Rubber Mold Man and today we're going to go over a simple but effective way to paint eyes that will work on most concrete statues, whether you're doing animals or figurines. One thing I learned years ago growing up in this business doing uh, statues for uh, a living is that there had to be a way to make the eyes look good but still not take a lot of time. Now I've seen people that paint super intricate eyes on statues that look great and that is fine. Obviously um, they look beautiful. I've done it before. However, for my business, I didn't have time to sit for one statue for a half hour, an hour at a time. I had to learn how to do eyes quickly on dozens of statues all at once to get them out for our shop as quickly as possible. So over the years, I kind of come up with a very simple way to do eyes that looks good for the most part. I think it looks fine and it works uh, on just about any type of animal. Now, in this case, uh, this is a little cute hippo. Uh, and it works perfect on them, so I'm going to use this uh, for today's demonstration. But whether this was a pelican, a, you know, a puppy, whatever, it works on almost all of them. And I sometimes have people ask, if it's an animal, don't I want to do a realistic animal eye? The truth is, most of the time, if you try to make a realistic eye on a statue, it doesn't really look good. So, for instance, if you have a statue of a cat and you try to do an actual cat's eye with the slit the way they are uh, naturally, it looks kind of weird, in all honesty. You wouldn't think it would, but it, it doesn't look natural. Whereas if you do kind of a generic, what I call almost a cartoon eye, which is what I'm gonna show you today, that seems to pass for almost anything. And people look at it and it doesn't jump out as something odd or, or, or different. It actually just looks natural, even though it's not. But it's just like cartoons when you watch on TV. They don't give uh, cartoon characters, um, such as a cat character that, realistic cat eyes for the most part, they usually give them a uh, fictionalized version of a human eye. And that's what I do. Obviously, it's your choice. Uh, feel free to paint your statues however you want. This is just one of the ways that I've learned to do it that I'm gonna share with you today. So I have some white paint on my small brush here and it's really thick paint. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to thin it out a bit. All right. So the first step, in most statues, this is pretty easy because the design is there for you to follow. You don't really have to worry uh, about, you know, doing anything other than staying within the lines. And you don't even have to be exact. Just get most of the eye area white. And of course, depending on the animal, you may change this up. Like for instance, sometimes frogs, instead of white, you might want to use like a yellowish color here. Uh, sometimes some of the gators I use, I'll actually do a black um, background for the eyes uh, just to make them stand out. Just have fun with it. And again, if you don't like the way it looks, go ahead and paint over it and try again. It, it's not gonna hurt it. So I'm just trying to go slow here, take my time. Uh, because of the video, I have to kind of stand back here so I'm not quite as close as I like to be to see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna be a little slower than I normally am. In my prime, I could just whip through these so quick that I'm at the point of life where I generally need glasses, which I don't have on right now. So I gotta do it a little slower at the moment. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And again, you don't have to be perfect because we're gonna put more paint on top of what's there now. But that gives you the general uh, look we're going for. Let me just touch up right up here a bit. Just kind of stand back, look at them, make sure they kind of look the same shape. If not, just touch up as needed. Okay. We're gonna let that dry and then we'll be back for step two. All right, now the white part of the eyes is dry. So we're gonna do the next step, which is what I guess what you would refer to as the iris. Uh, now th the color is really up to you. You can do blue, uh, you know, grays, earth tones and that. Uh, experiment, see what you like. For something like this, I don't want it to be too showy. So I'm gonna use kind of a beige uh, brown color here. And all you do is you just kind of go back in and this may take a little bit of practice to get the feel for it, but basically do a circle that connects to the top of the white. Uh, it's okay if it goes up to the top and then just bring it down a bit and it does not have to be a perfect circle. Get it as close as you can, but um, you know, sometimes with the statues, the eye areas are not very well defined. You might not have a lot of area to work with. Just get a circle-ish 
look in it. Uh, you know, and that's good enough. I'm not going to do anything more. Like I said, I'm all about quick, uh, you know, quantity. You know, I had to get a lot done, so I never worried about every last detail. Now, for the other eye, just try to do your best to make it look like the first one. About the same size, the same area of the eye. And for this one, I'm doing it pretty much in the middle. And again, I'm not worried about absolute perfection here because honestly, most people are not gonna just stare super close in the eyes. They're gonna glance at it and see some cute eyes and be like, oh, what an adorable little hippo. A little bit more over here. I was just about out of this color paint and I can tell because it's really chunky. So it's a little bit more work than it should be. But there we go. I think that's good enough. All right. So now we wait for that to dry and we're going to do the pupil. So we'll be back in a moment. All right, we're back. Brown paint is dry. So now we're going to do some irises, which is just standard black paint. And I have a, a fairly fine brush here. And no, I don't use any specific type of brush. I go to the stores and get a bag of whatever's cheapest. Some of the brushes at the uh, hobby stores are ridiculous in price. You don't need them. You're gonna, when you paint concrete, you're actually gonna go through them pretty fast. So just go and get a bag of the cheap basic ones. I usually can find a bag of assorted brushes uh, that are for small detailing for about $10. And we usually have like 15 or so brushes. And those will last for a good time. So. For the black, we're going to basically just do a circle and again, up to the top of the previous circle. And again, it might take you a little practice, but again, if you mess up, just go back with some of the brown paint and touch it up. Still happens to me from time to time. That's probably good enough from what I can tell. Again, I'm outside here, not in my usual position painting without my glasses, so I'm doing the best I can, but uh, I think it'll pass for what we're doing here. Now well, let's do the other eye. And we're just going to do the exact same thing. Make the eyes at this point match. They can mirror each other at this point. Um, it's the next step that can be uh, a little tricky depending on where the eyes are located, but we'll get to that in a moment. So that's pretty much it. Just two black irises. And again, just put them towards the top of, uh, or I'm sorry, these are the pupils. Two black pupils, put them to the top of the iris. And as you can see, it's starting to look uh, a lot more it has a lot more personality coming out at this point with very simple eyes. Again, you can take a lot longer and put a lot more detail in them, but I find that just these simplistic eyes that we're showing here seem to work the best. All right, one more step. We'll be back in a minute once this black paint dries. And we're back for our final step for the eyes. And this is a simple one, uh, but one where you do need to be a little more particular with what we do. We're going to put a little white dot in the pupil so it uh, replicates kind of like a light reflection and it really makes the eye pop. So all I do is I use the end of a small brush. Uh, there are dotting tools that you can use for painting. Use them if you like. I uh, do just fine using a back of a brush. So I dipped it in a little bit of the white paint and we're just gonna pick kind of an upper side of the black pupil here and boop, just like that. Now for the other eye, we want to put it in the same position where it is on that eye. You don't want to have it on the other side because then it makes your hippo or whatever animal look uh, a little cross-eyed, a little derpy as they say. Uh, now that's a fine if it's an animal such as a pelican where the eyes are on opposite sides of the head. But if you can see both eyes looking forward to some degree, you don't want to put the white dot on opposite sides. You want to put it in the same position in each eye. So we'll just go right in there. And there we go simple, easy to do eyes that end up looking great. And I will admit, these are not my best work. Um, being out here and not having my glasses on and that, uh, I got up close a minute ago and was looking like, ooh, these are a little uh, sloppy for my standards, and yet they still look fine. So don't feel bad if they're not completely perfect. These aren't. And yet I guarantee you, if I put this out in my shop, not a single person's gonna notice any flaws or imperfections. What they're gonna see is a beautiful, cute hippo looking back at them. And this hippo, of course, doesn't have much color on it, but those eyes do everything to bring out the personality of this cute hippo. So eyes are the window to the soul, even on statues like this. They don't need to be detailed. They don't need to be a lot of work. A simple little eye like this will work on just about everything. So I hope this helps you uh, come up with some ideas for your statues. And until next time, thanks for watching.